All right, now let's take a serious look at the best comedy race for the Emmys. Chris, you've got the nerve already to have your, your lineup of top six predicted for nominees. What, what are they? Well, I do, and, you know, this is only May, so this could change, but uh, comedy is different than drama in that there are, there are some great comedies on the air, but there's not the, the wide mass of comedies that are that, all that good uh, on TV today, so get, pulling together even a top ten list is kind of difficult, but uh, I've got four shows in my top actual nominated six that almost anybody would have, uh, Entourage, the Office, Thirty Rock, and Two and a Half Men. They were all nominated last year. I've got The Big Bang Theory. Here's a show that is, I think, probably the the second best comedy on TV today, and uh, I think uh, uh, that it's got a good shot of making it in in its second season now. And my big surprise is uh, from HBO. I've got Flight of the Concords oh, getting nominated no. uh, as best comedy series. <laughs> Oh, I hate that show. You know what? The, you know why I hate that show? This is just well. All right, let's just take a step aside for a moment. All this awards prognostication to just permit me, indulge me, if you will, a little rant. What is so funny, Chris <laughs> or Rob? You're a fan of this show. What is so funny Come about on. Flight of the Concords? <laughs> it's you go Chris, first, Rob. Own... <laughs> look, it is brilliant. And look, Flight of the Concords is deadpan. It's witty. Um, it, it's it's original, it's brilliant, it's it's just brilliant, and uh, I just don't get it. What's wrong with Flight of the Concord? It's a fantastic show. Do you know? Let me tell you what's so, so wrong about this. Show. It's one of those shows that depends on simply being annoying to being funny, right? I mean, all, the more annoying they are, they let it creates this kind of uncomfortable. Am I right? It creates this kind of uncomfortableness. People giggle. And then, it, Rob, last time we did this video conference call, you described you and Paula, your wife, sitting on a couch watching that, you roaring with laughter, and Paula looking at you going, huh? <laughs> I think I know yeah, what she was going yeah, yeah, on. She, I mean, that happens quite a lot in general, but uh, yeah, let's, you know, she shrugs at it and says, what is this? This is crap. We are not watching this again. And I insist on watching it. I think it's brilliant. Maybe not necessarily should be nominated for Best Comedy Series, but it's totally up there. And Chris is right. It has a really good shot, Tom. It has a great following. And you know what else? There are probably a lot of people who don't really even like it that much. Because it's cool and because it's trendy, um, they'll probably vote for it anyway. Isn't that what Hollywood's all about? It really is. Uh, absolutely. And, and this uh, would not be the first show, Tom, nominated that, that you didn't like, right? <laughs> <laughs> I know. They have, a, they have a knack in Hollywood of picking the stuff I love. Well, load. think about it, too. What you just said is normally the Curb Your Enthusiasm slot, the annoying, <laughs> uh, sort of self-pretentious show. A Curb is not eligible this year, so something has to come in and fill that hole. I think this idea right. of Big Bang Theory coming in here is really fascinating. I know both of you guys are really big fans of the show. I've only seen three or four episodes of it. I liked it very much. But you realize you're sticking your neck out here. You're thinking that this frat boyish comedy could get in there. Normally they don't. Sometimes they do, like Scrubs. So why do you think this is mm -hmm. the exception, not the rule? Well, I think it's – well, first of all, it's very, very funny. It's easily accessible. I think – I think a, a voter sitting at home with these screeners right now could easily watch this and find a few laughs. Jim Parsons on the show is amazing. He is he is the yeah. breakout star of the last couple of seasons, somebody coming out of nowhere that hardly any of us have ever heard of and just knocks it out of the park every single week. And and uh, it has some pedigree here. I mean, the, the producers of this show have uh, produced, uh, what, Sybil and Roseanne and, uh, uh, of course, Two and a Half Men, which has been nominated the last couple or three seasons. So it's, I think it's a show that's going to uh, surprise some people. They're also putting on a huge campaign effort this year. They've done several Q&A sessions. They've got more coming up in, in the uh, L.A. area. And uh, I think it's, it's a show that's gaining steam here with the Emmy voters. Yeah, I completely agree. And that's what we talked about last time, Tom, as well. Um, this show is the funniest show on TV. I think it's funnier than what we all assume is the best show on telly, which is 30 Rock. It is hilarious. 
serious. You do not have to be a big fan to watch the show. You can come into it at any episode and it will blow you away. It's hilarious. Jim Parsons is a genius. And Chris is right. He's come out of nowhere. He's everywhere these days on the internet. He's been interviewed by everybody. Um, and I think that is going to be the surprise when you see the reporters down at the um, auditorium after the nomination announcement. They'll all be like, what's this show being nominated? We're, we've all been saying it for, for months. And Chuck Lorre is going to have two shows in the top, in, in the top six uh, nominated shows this year for sure. Wow. That, that would be interesting to see. Now, last year we had, in addition to top of the a flight of the Concords in the top ten. We had Weeds and we had Ugly Betty making the top ten. And we should explain to people who, who aren't that Emmy savvy that last year they had a runoff where the, all the members of the Academy voted for to eliminate things down to a top ten. Then they had everything scrutinized by panels. This year it's just going to be a top six runoff, pure popular vote. So it's logical to think that the shows that got onto the top ten are strong candidates to get to the top six. And Chris, you don't have Ugly Betty or Weeds in your top six. Why? No, I think a lot of people are predicting weeds uh, just because the category is kind of thin. But, boy, if it hasn't made it yet, I mean, when it was burning hot that first couple of seasons, I don't see how it suddenly makes it now. It's a very niche show, and and uh, I think it's on an Emmy downcline, as a, as a matter of fact. Now, Ugly Betty certainly could make it back on a popular vote. It is a very popular show still, and I would not be surprised at all if it knocked out one of those two shows that I have kind of a surprise nominations. But, but uh ABC's not even all that strong on Ugly Betty anymore. They pulled it. They put it back on. They've, they don't even have all that much um, uh, attention on it as much as they used to. So I just I don't think the uh, the momentum is there for that show right now. Rob, what do you think? Yeah, I agree, Tom. Um, I agree. Look, the question in this category always has to be, what else is there? And, you know, we don't have the same amount of good shows in contention as we do in the drama series category, for instance. And, and um, so when you take out those few shows that we are all assuming will be locks, plus things like Big Bang Theory, which we all think will make, you know, we, we don't all think, but we some of us think will line up. What else is there? And so we've got shows like Weeds, which is always... Almost there, but never makes it through. This time, it doesn't have to rely on one episode. It can just rely on its popularity. So that is definitely a possibility. We have other shows, like um, Desperate Housewives has been up there in the past, although I think it's probably past its prime. It's certainly um, up there. It had a bit of publicity when uh, it it jumped up five years in in its timeline, and so that might um, propel it into some kind of contention. Um, but, you know, besides that, Scrubs, Parks and Recreation, Old Family Steam, Guy, Family Guy, what, you're leaving that out. That was top well, 10 yeah. last year. We Definitely. can see that in there, and, right, and guys? Tom, I, I know, Tom, you're predicting um, that Family Guy will probably make it through. I think that's a very smart thing to, to do because it's definitely up there with a shot. It's what, what's funnier than Family Guy? It's hilarious. And it made the top 10 last year, so we all know that, that, that Amy voters aren't offended by it. Right, Chris, but you, you know, we it. heard from those panel panel screenings last year. You know, Family Guy was in the top ten, and then it got such huge laughs there in those small auditorium screenings that, w- that some people started predicting it to be an Emmy nominee last year, and it did not make it. So that all made us kind of think that maybe it was more like the nine ten position on popular votes, as uh, and and then maybe you know had a decent panel viewing. Uh, vote and and it did not make it so I just don't think it's in that top six on popular vote it just it couldn't be based on what we heard last year 